Next week marks five years since the nation's worst school shooting took place at Sandy Hook Elementary, killing 20 children and six staff members. The massacre did not, as some had hoped, become a transformative moment and lead to policies restricting gun access. But the killings did lead school districts to ramp up security measures, including lockdown drills, hiring police officers, and installing cameras and metal detectors. Now advocates in a growing number of states are pushing those efforts a step further by lobbying for state laws that would allow educators to carry concealed weapons in classrooms. Correspondent Kavitha Cardoza with our partner, Education Week, traveled to West Union, Ohio for our weekly segment, Making the Grade. It's a peaceful morning on this lush 200-acre private property in rural Ohio. That is, until class starts. Slow it down, I want a dead center every time. The 200 students at this firing range all work for school districts. They're teachers, principals, bus drivers. We actually had the lunch lady in here. I know she did not wear her hairnet while she was doing the training. Joe Eaton is the program director of this three-day training. If I do a tap rack. Faster saves lives. It feels different. There's no other emergency where we rely 100% on outside help. If a kid falls in a pool and starts to drown, we don't simply dial 911 and wait for the paramedics to get there. We jump in the pool, we pull the kid out, we pray somebody knows CPR, and we start saving lives while we're waiting for the professionals to get there. It's the same thing with heart attacks or fires. Eaton says school violence should be no different. He's all for trying to prevent shootings, locking entrances, setting up tip lines, and identifying troubled students. But he says it's just as important educators are prepared if there is a shooting. Just waiting for outside help? Eden says that just means more deaths and injuries. My number one concern in my district as a superintendent is student safety. That's Laurie Snyder Lowe, the superintendent of Morgan Local School District. Her rural schools are spread out over more than 400 square miles, which makes them what she calls a soft target. The response time for emergency services is rather long and um, it can take somewhere, it can take a half hour to get to, to the school depending on where the, where the sheriff's department is and the rest of the county. School shootings, especially those like Columbine or Sandy Hook, are very rare. More than 55 million children go to school in the U.S. every day and in the last five years a firearm has been discharged 144 times at a school. But Erin Knox, a second grade teacher at a suburban school district, Fairfield City Schools, is still concerned. She learned to shoot when she was nine years old and has long had a concealed carry permit. I carry everywhere I go in my personal life. So grocery store, church, yes, everywhere. Except in her school. Knox's district, like most across the country, doesn't allow her to carry a gun when teaching. She's hoping that will change. It's for selfish reasons. My own children go to my school, um, so I want to know what to do, um, you know, if there would be an active killer and, you know, how to keep my kids safe and everybody else's kids safe. If somebody hands you a gun with it closed, you always want to make sure it's unloaded first. Under Ohio law, local school boards can vote on whether to allow staff to carry guns. You show you the grip. Board members can also decide whether or not to inform parents and school staff about their decision. Across the country, 15 states already allow concealed carry of some kind in schools. And just this year, two dozen states are considering or have recently considered these controversial policies. Most were defeated. The nonprofit Moms Demand Action was formed right after the Sandy Hook shootings. Since then, they've joined forces with every town for gun safety. I think the biggest misconception is the mindset that a teacher could instantly uh, move from a mindset of teaching a classroom full of students to springing into action like a sharpshooter um, in a very chaotic and crisis situation. Jennifer Hoppy is the deputy director of Moms Demand Action. She says the focus should be on prevention. 
An educator is there to nurture and care for and educate students. And um, to put the burden of tr being a crisis responder on them, it just isn't fair, especially when you know research has shown that even um, trained, highly trained police officers in crisis situations um, frequently don't hit their targets. But the notion of arming teachers is becoming very popular. Why do you think that is? I think it's because the gun lobby, um, it, they have a priority of normalizing guns into every situation, um, into making us uh, accept uh, guns everywhere for anyone uh, with no questions asked. According to a 2017 Pew study, 55% of adults are against allowing teachers and officials to carry guns in schools. In fact, all the major teacher, principal, school employee and security organizations oppose guns in schools, except when carried by a police or security officer. They say it would distract from teaching, lead to fatal accidents, as well as increase liability insurance costs. John Moffat is a retired principal in Montana. Even though it's been more than 30 years, he vividly remembers walking down a school hallway one day and seeing a student he knew carrying a gun. As he passed me, he fired a shot, uh, it hit me in the side and went past right through my body and knocked me to the floor, fired a second time. Moffat has been shooting since he was 12, but all his experience didn't prepare him for terrified students crying and screaming as they rushed out the building. Absolute chaos, absolute pandemonium. Imagine what would happen if you introduce into that scene somebody f on staff carrying, uh, you know, carrying a weapon and running adrenaline charged into that scene. It's almost impossible for me to imagine that it wouldn't have been worse. Carry a concealed handgun in a school. Earlier this year, Montana lawmakers debated a measure that would have allowed staff to carry guns in schools. Guns in the hands of law-abiding citizens stop criminals from killing people. It's that simple. Moffitt, who volunteers for the organization Moms Demand Action, testified against the proposal. It didn't pass. Moffitt says not allowing guns in schools is not about taking away anyone's gun rights. I think we can have a balance in Montana, which has a strong and rich hunting tradition and gun ownership by responsible people. I'm not trying to change that at all. It's just, this is not responsible. It's not common sense. Okay, good use of space. Lori Snyder-Lowe, the superintendent, is practicing an active shooter scenario. She wishes she didn't have to worry about gun violence in schools, but wants to be prepared. I was very terrified. I would agree that guns have no place in schools. In a perfect world, yes. But the reality is that in today's society, guns have been brought into school many, many times and caused very much death and injury to many children and staff members. For PBS NewsHour and Education Week, I'm Kavitha Cardoza in West Union, Ohio. And connected to this online, a poet with a personal connection to the 2012 mass shooting at an elementary school in Newtown, Connecticut, shares a new anthology of poems and essays about gun violence. That's at pbs.org newshour.